Welcome to ERA. I am Dr. Muhammad Talat, Assistant Professor of Radiology at University. Let's continue our course, Emergency CT Brain course. And before starting this case, I hope you enjoy our course. And if you have any comments, I am happy to read or to see any interaction on my videos. Uh, let's go ahead. In our case, this is non contrasted scan for the brain. And uh, I think all of you can see this abnormality. We have a lesion, and this lesion centered at the left basal ganglia. This lesion is characterized by well circumscribed border, irregular border, and surrounded by high potency brain edema. This lesion shows different components. The predominant components is multilocular cystic component with high potency fluid content. And also, it shows an eccentric hyperdense component. These hyperdense components may be hemorrhagic, may be proteinaceous. So we are dealing with a complex mass lesion at the left basic ganglia region, extending superiorly to the centrum semioval and extending to the left frontal region. And this lesion exerts mass effect in the form of compression of the left lateral ventricle with mild to midline shift. And as, us as usual, we should measure the midline shift as we did in many times before from the foramen of Monroe towards the midline. Also, it exerts mass effect in the form of effacement of the cortical sulci. Look for this effaced swollen cortical sulci as compared to the normal contralateral side. So, we should ask ourselves, is it hematoma of different blood density? Maybe this one fresh blood density, maybe this one old blood density. I think it's difficult to diagnose this lesion as a hematoma because it's, it is a complex lesion. Once we have any complex lesion, remember, again, the classifications that we illustrated in the last video, that we have some causes, secondary causes for intracerebral hematoma maybe secondary to cortical vein thrombosis or dura sinus thrombosis, maybe hemorrhagic portion, maybe secondary for brain tumor. I think this is the most probably diagnosed in this case. Most probably, this one is hemorrhagic component associated with brain tumor. I think it's difficult to be other possibilities in this case. It's difficult to be simple intracerebral hematoma. Also, it's difficult to be hemorrhagic infarction. So the most logical thinking here in this case, once we have a complex mass with well-defined border, different components, cystic, solid, any components that may be query for space occupying lesion, that's enough to request either contrast-enhanced MRI. If the MRI is not available, I think contrast-enhanced CT can be done for this case. We did excel T2 MRI study for the same patient. And as you see here, we have a complex mass with different components, solid components and cystic components. These are the cystic components, as you see here. And we have also some solid components. So we are dealing with a complex mass, most likely represents brain tumor as a primary or secondary. We will not go deep in this case. Let's go to our second case. This is a non contrasted scan for an adult patient. As you see here, we have a well circumscribed subcortical oval shaped acute hematoma at the right temporal region. We should measure this hematoma. Also, we have an irregular shaped acute hematoma located or expanding the bones. We should measure this hematoma. And we should describe its extension. As you see here, it extends along the midbrain on both sides. Also, it extends superiorly along the corticospinal tracts at the right internal capsule. Also, it extends along the right middle cerebral peduncle. After describing the extension and the measuring the whole dimensions for this hematoma, 
we should also describe its mass effect. We have a specimen of the basal cisterns. And once we have any abnormality in the brainstem or cerebellum or the osteal fossa, we should comment on the force ventricle. The force ventricle is totally obliterated. Once we have any compression upon the force ventricle, go directly to see if there is any significant hydrocephalic changes. We, sh we didn't have any hydrocephalic changes. If we need to check the hydrocephalus, first we should check the temporal horns. The temporal horns are not dilated, so we don't have even early hydrocephalic changes. So we have two locations for acute hematoma in the bones and the brainstem, and also briefly located in the right temporal region. As we said in the previous video, that we have different causes for intracerebral hematomas, and most likely this one is hypertensive hemorrhage. Hypertensive hemorrhage, as we said before, the most common characteristic locations is the basic ganglia and the brainstem. This is our learning points here in this case. This is our third case today, non-contrasted scan for young adult patient. The first thing that you can see here, this hyperdense area located at the bones. And once we have this one, you may think that there is something hemorrhagic lesion in this area. But if you start to see the whole picture for the lesion, you will find the bones itself is markedly swollen and hypodense. And also, it is seen partially encasing the basal artery. This is a basal artery. So we have something abnormal involving the whole bones, and we have something inside, maybe hemorrhagic component, maybe proteinous content. So my message here, especially for the genius, don't pick up small abnormality and focus on this one and leave the whole abnormality. Because this one, you should be familiar. I saw it many times. Really, I know that it is not common, but really, I saw it many times in my practice, even in the emergency CT scan. So something abnormal involving the whole bones with an eccentric hemorrhagic component or proteinous component. So the first thing that I should think is diffuse pontine glioma. And this one needs further MRI assessment, contrast enhancing MRI assessment for better characterization. Once we have also brainstem lesion or cerebral lesion, you should comment on its mass effect. This one is compressing the force ventricle, but at the same time, still we don't have any hydrocephalic changes. Again, if we need to check the hydrocephalus, please go ahead to see the temporal horn first. If it is dilated, it is one of the early signs for hydrocephalic changes. So this one needs further assessment as we discussed before. We did MRI scan for the same patient, and as you see here, the bones is markedly swollen by a mass lesion or space equifying lesion. The space equifying lesion extends along the middle cerebral peduncles. Also, it extends superiorly along the two cerebral peduncles. So, it extends along the middle cerebral peduncles and goes superiorly along the cerebral peduncles of the midbrain. So, this one is very characteristic for diffuse pontine glioma. I will not go deep in this case. That's enough for today, and thank you so much.